All right, so in the last video, I was working over in that area. And I'm going to go back to it, but I want to focus on this because it's kind of nasty outside and I couldn't go over to our property and cut wood and do all that stuff. So I'm going to work on this here. And this mountain is really huge <laughs> and it is a nice scene block on the layout there. But I'm going to trim it up a little bit, make it look a little bit more natural. The thing about this here is it's so close to the track that I don't think I'm going to be able to get my plaster to make my kind of rock wall look so it's going to be like a cut like this used to go down here like this and then when they blasted through so I got to cut this back so I can get my plaster in there and get enough to be able to carve rock so we're going to do that and in this area here I'm thinking this would be a nice central point to have a real tall rock maybe something like that maybe about 50 60 feet high in real life but a nice big rock outcropping maybe rail fans can get up there and shoot some photos that sort of thing so I've got the track taped off and I got this line cut and I'm going to attempt to lop this off in this area here where this line is and I don't know if you can see it or not. If I can do that, I can get my plaster in there and be able to carve it. And there's going to be rocks like up in here and that sort of thing. But we're going to start on this and I don't know if I can do it while it's sitting up there but if you've watched any of these videos you know that is removable at this point. And I need to put some butcher paper up on the backdrop to protect that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on that now. Again, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this while it's on the layout, but it's gonna help me a little bit because I don't, I don't have a helper here today to lift this thing on. So I'm just gonna to try to lop it off the best I can. And then that way I can pull this out and get the butcher paper behind it to protect it. And then I don't have to take it off the layout, but we're gonna try this. I don't wanna poke through the bottom here. But let's see, here we go. I'm sure I'll be able to do it. I might have to do it in sections now. All right, so that came out of there pretty easily. I'm just cutting this out and tossing it in the trash. It's a little easier than I thought. So once I get this all trimmed up, we'll pull it out. All right, there you have it. I got all that clipped off. I shoved it down a little bit to give myself a little more relief here. I lopped off this because it was kind of a big, huge, huge hump there. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of make this gradually flow down in here like this. Trees up there would be a nice angle. And here, as you come across this bridge, you come in right into a rocky area. Like they lopped this all out of there. Maybe a big rock here, you know, that sort of thing. But on this side, I used some spray insulation foam. That way I didn't have to pack a bunch of crap in here and it's gonna get a base of plaster over top of it anyway. So the paper behind it will be stuck to it and then I can just trim it to that contour. Then I'll be able to get the cardboard out of there because I didn't wanna, when I was cutting this off, I didn't wanna cut the backdrop. But then I can put my butcher paper up and that'll stay up there for a while until I get the dirt in and all that stuff. But we're ready to go. Here I found these down in the basement, and these were little diorama bases that I did, <clears throat> and I took about, I don't know, I, mean, I guess I made 10, and I took about five to seven of them to one of the train shows, and if you went to the Bunker Hill Train Club show, and this was years ago, I did a seminar on how to do basic scenery, and it was kind of weathering the plaster, you know, coloring that, and then the foam base, putting some weeds and dirt on it and that sort of thing. But ahead of time, I had sprinkled some dirt over the dirt colored paint because obviously I couldn't do all that in one seminar. And if you were at one of those seminars, let me know in the comments. But this is the kind of look, this weedy, grassy Appalachian look. That's the look I'm going for. And this is from the old spruce layout as well from a diorama. All right, so I cut this one piece out and I can use this foam. I cut this one piece out. I may be able to use it. I may, may not. Let's see if I cut enough relief. Now, obviously, that's pretty thick. But that's the idea. All right, if any of you are married, and I'm gonna, just going to guess a lot of you probably are, this is how to avoid a plaster disaster. 
And if you have not worked with plaster before on a layout, you will sling it, you will slop it, and it will get on here. And you want to wear dirty shoes, dirty pants, dirty shirt, the whole nine yards. And when you step in this stuff, you're going to have white tracks all the way up there that your wife is not going to like, or your husband, or whoever you have with you. But I went ahead and used another can of this spray foam. And this, I felt like because of those cavities, I was going to have to plop too much uh, plaster in there. So I filled them in, and it'll give it just enough bite. Now, plaster loves paper, so something like that, it can sit against that. It's going to stick right to it. But if I need to, I can even carve this up. And, I, and yes, I have carved this stuff. All right, I think I'm ready to start putting a base coat of plaster on. And once I get that on, I can start putting rocks in. And I know I say this in almost every video, but I outlined making rocks, or at least this style of rocks, in a previous video on the channel. And in that video, we also had a good friend, Dave Meek, from Arizona. And he's the one that has the Thunder Mesa Mining Company YouTube channel. Check him out. He's a great modeler and a great artist. But we're going to make some rocks here. And of course, I'm not going to show it in this video because I have just me, I have two hands, and plaster's messy. So check out our video here on the channel that shows the consistency of making plaster rocks. And of course, it's just a basic example of, of one of the many, many, many techniques there is. But check that out if you want. So anyway, the supplies here, if you don't, they're too lazy to go look at the other video. The supplies are plaster and water. That's it. And here I have a couple of rock molds, the same rock molds that those were made of. They're quick, they're easy, and of course I don't use those throughout the whole thing, but I'll put I'll put a few on there and then blend them in with some other rocks that I cut. But it makes it a little bit easier. So what I'll do is I'll soup up this mix, start filling in some of that just to give it a base, and then do a couple rocks. As they dry, I'll take them out, set them out. All right, first layer is in. It's rough, but it's there. And you see there's plenty of clearance now. Rock in, so I can add the rocks in. But the bad thing is I'm out of plaster. Those boxes went quick and that was a lot to fill in. And I'm glad I used that spray foam because that took up a lot of empty void space. Y'all want to talk about a mess. I try to work fast. When I work fast, things get lost and everything is a mess. But that's kind of what I'm going after. Kind of that look. I don't know if you can see that or not. Just big tall rocks. Lots of trees and bushes and vines and all that stuff. All right, so on this side, I created some bigger rocks. And over here, because this area is more of the lowlands and kind of this, we're gonna pretend this is miles and miles away from here. But this is more of a shale kind of look here. And I know they wouldn't, shale wouldn't necessarily be right next to that kind of rock, but we want a variety. And I untaped the track just so I could get all this vacuumed up and cleaned up. And I'm gonna paint the track here in a little bit. I'm gonna put a base coat of stain on the rocks. Now, once again, I covered this in a previous video, but this is a enamel paint and thinner mix. And I'm just using this to give us some shadows. It'll dry a little bit lighter. You're not worried about what it gets on. It doesn't really matter. Cause it's just gonna cover everything. It's a pretty light mixture. This is going to give us our shadows and we can go back and paint and detail and all that stuff later. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop and I think this is enough to get us rolling here. The pinnacle. And over here, that shell rock, I dug back into it a little bit and it's going to have a lot of weeds and bushes and dirt up in there, like dirt falling down in there, that sort of thing. But we got a base coat on it. You can see how up in this area would be that shale, dirt-looking stuff that's just falling out of there. Just something different to give it some contrast, especially when you're shooting from this angle. 
that's it we got rocks and I did as you can see start painting the track I got to go ahead and finish that up at some point here now I got to tell you straight out if I was not doing this for video purposes I would stick to one section and kind of finish that almost like I'm doing a diorama but I did before I don't know February I wanted to get to the point at the end of the mountain where I could say I have base scenery on everything and then I can go back in this area because down there I haven't even really started that other than the track work that's down there I haven't done much but I just wanted to keep on rolling and I wanted to be able to do something different in every video so in closing this video out my thought is that I'm going to do some more work on that rock maybe tomorrow get that to where I like it before I put all the final colors on and all that stuff but I have no problem putting dirt the base dirt on the top up there so that way I can have that done and then really all I'm doing is putting in the scenery details you know the bushes vines weeds and all that stuff trees so that's what I'm going to do next